So you own a Tesla, but are you using the most powerful security feature? All right, welcome back to the channel. Dan here from Tesla. Back with another episode of Tesla 101. And today we are talking about Dashcam and Sentry. Now, as we know, Teslas in the past have become the target of vandalism. And this is why Sentry is so important. And as well as dash cam, like, you know, any car needs a good dash cam. And the best part about the Tesla is that instead of just having one camera in the front, you have six. All right. So today we are going to go over the basics of what dash cam and Sentry is, as well as how to set it up properly, how to view and record footage, as well as how to download it so you can give it to the proper authorities. By the end of this video, your Tesla will be a fortress. So let's get right into it. Before I do, though, please take a second and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. You get better content. So please subscribe. Your Tesla's watching, but is it protecting you? Let's go over what dash cam and Sentry can do. So dash cam is basically like a standard dash cam. While you're driving, it records everything around the vehicle. It records for about an hour loop. So let's say you're driving for three hours. The last hour will be captured and just it will auto renew itself and recording over the old footage. It will also automatically save and download footage uh, based on a critical incident, such as like if you get an accident or airbags deploy or stuff like that. There's also other ways to manually record a clip. However, I'll get into those in a minute. The other function is sentry mode. Think of this basically as your car security feature. Basically, anytime someone comes near your car, the system will activate. A huge message will pop up on the screen, alerting the person that, hey, you're being recorded, as well as the headlights will kind of flash, also letting them know that they're being recorded. And if that person doesn't get the hint and keeps going after your car, let's say they're trying to steal it, that will trigger the alarm, as well as give you an alert on your mobile app. So the benefit of dash cam and sentry mode in a Tesla, as opposed to any other vehicle, is that instead of just having one camera, you have eight. So you have one in the front, one in the back, and then two pillar cameras, and then there's two cameras in the fender. So you have eight cameras. Uh, one, two, three. A few moments later. Four, six cameras. They're constantly recording, so they record basically a 360 degree view of your car. The most important part about any security system is where is the footage going? And you don't want to cheap out because the right USB is crucial for security. So in terms of USB drives, Tesla will give you a Tesla brand USB drive. It's pretty cool. It looks like a cyber truck kind of thing or cyber whistle. And it's 120 gigabytes. That's pretty much all you need. But you can opt for other things if you want. In my first Tesla, before Tesla gave out USB drives, I had an SSD. I believe this is a Samsung T7. Works well. Never had any issues with it. And it was like, I think it was our 256 gigabytes, which is more than what you need. I think 128 is probably the minimum requirement. Probably want to go more than 64, I would say. One thing to note is that if your drive does get full, Sentry will automatically start replacing old footage. So that's why the bigger the drive, the more footage you're going to be able to store. Can opt for something else if you want. You just have to make sure it's high efficiency and high endurance because of the constant rewriting and stuff like that. So the great thing about Tesla is that there's multiple options for USB ports. Now, depending on when your car was made, you'll have different options. So all cars have center console ports as well as these uh, ports in the rear. Now, the thing with the ports in the rear is that they are only for charging. So that's not an option for you. Now, depending on when your car was made, if it was made, I think, prior to November 2021, you probably most likely do not have a glove box port and you have center console ports. So if that's the case, you want to plug in your uh, Sentry dash cam USB into your center console area. Now, if your car was made after 2021 and you have the USB in the glove box, you want to use that one because most likely your center console ports are also only charging. Now, the one that you get in your Tesla will be pre-formatted, so you don't have to worry about it. However, let's say you get a used car, you have to replace that one. You want to make sure it's formatted uh, with either XFAT or FAT32. Those are the two formats that you want to use, as well as you need a uh, folder in the root directory, which is called Tesla Cam. You want capital T, Tesla and then CAM with a capital C, that's one word. Uh, so you wanna make sure that folder is there so that all the footage goes into that folder. So the one downside about Sentry is that it does drain your battery. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips to help minimize that. So let's talk about how to activate it and the different options for setting. So in the main control page, you have two buttons. There's one for uh, dash cam recording, as well as Sentry. You'll see a red button, if that's there, it's on. Uh, you just touch it and it'll turn off. With dash cam recording, if you just hit that button, it'll save a clip. This is also where you want to, if you need to remove your drive, this is how you kind of eject it. Because as we know, if you don't want to eject the drive, it blows up. Uh, so you just hold down on the recording button and eventually it'll say pause and that's safe to take out the drive. 
you'll find the rest of the century settings over in the car menu, go down to safety, and that's where they're all gonna be. Again, you can toggle on and off Sentry from here. And then below that is where you're gonna save some battery. And it'll auto enable Sentry and park. So basically every time you park your car, your Sentry will turn on. However, you can use these exclusions to cover off certain areas so you're not using crazy battery. So let's say you're at home and you park in a garage, there's really no need for Sentry. So you need to turn that off so that your car's not sitting there for 10 hours and Sentry being on the entire time, taking basically pictures of nothing in your garage. Same with work. If you have a work that you have are confident that nothing's gonna happen, you can turn it off there, as well as favorites. But the thing with favorites though, is that it's all favorites. So I wouldn't recommend that. Camera-based detection will basically be, do you wanna use just sensors or camera too? Obviously it's a no brainer, use your cameras. So the next setting is disable Sentry sound. Now, for some reason, if you wanna turn this on, you can, but what would happen is that if a threat is detected and someone's trying to steal your car, no sounds will go off. Basically, you're just gonna have your cameras recording and someone's stealing your car. So also with disabled sentry sounds, I can see that some people may be worried that if they're using either camp mode or dog mode with your dog in the car, you really don't want your dog to be freaked out with loud noises. Thankfully, Tesla has thought of that. And with dog mode and camp mode enabled, even if you don't have this mode enabled, uh, if the event happens, it won't make noises in the car to protect your dog or whoever's in the car at the time, uh, protect their hearing. Now, if you want to view any sort of footage from your mobile app, so you want to have this on to view clips as they come in, as well as the ability to view the live feed. So kind of in the middle, we see your dash cam settings. Now there's off uh, and manual and auto. Now, I don't know why someone would take off auto because then you basically are left with only manual. And if you get an accident, probably the last thing you're gonna remember is, oh, let's save that dash cam clip, especially if you're injured. Uh, so it kind of makes no sense to only rely on manual. So I would leave that on auto, but you still have the option of manually activating it. Uh, so there's also on honk. So if you honk your horn at any time, it'll save a 10 minute clip, which is useful. Below here, we have delete dash cam clips. Now for now, you can only delete all the clips. But in an upcoming software update, you should be out by the time you're watching this video, uh, you should be able to batch delete uh, certain clips. Uh, and then we obviously have the format the drive to format the entire thing. Caught it on dash cam, let's learn how to view and save critical footage even from your phone. To get to your viewer, you can go to your app section and you'll see dash cam. Now this is the live view. Uh, up here, you're gonna have your menu, basically all your saved clips, uh, your saved clips, which is your saved dash cam clips, and then Sentry will be all your Sentry clips. And then you can just view them. As you're viewing it, uh, you can see it usually starts off with where the event happened, uh, but you can jump to the event so that basically that is whatever triggered the event. So in case of a Sentry mode, uh, whenever that person came close to your car, that's when the event triggered because it does save before and after. So if you want to jump to that event, that'll basically tell you exactly when the system was triggered. Uh, and then obviously you have your grid so you can watch all cameras at once or front or back or left and right. If you have a newer car with, I believe, AI4, so the new, like a new model wire three, uh, you will have options to your uh, B pillar cams as well. So you can also view footage from a mobile app. But like I said, you need to have view live footage from mobile app enabled in the car before you do this. And you do need premium connectivity to have this function as well. So basically you go to your app and you might see a, uh, a button in the, you know, just underneath your controls. Uh, you can access it there or as well as go down to security and drivers. It's in the menu now. Uh, if you see at the top, you'll see dash cam viewer. That's where you're gonna see your saved clips. So again, kind of same format in the car. You can have all as well as you can just look at your Sentry as well as your dash cam. Uh, so same principle, you can watch all the clips and then toggle between different uh, views from the car. And then you can also save a clip 30 seconds right to your phone. And then in the view live mode, Okay, so from here, you can see uh, the current view of the car. You can toggle between cameras, all six cameras, as well as the interior as well. And below that, you also have some functions where you can honk your horn, as well as flash your lights to scare off any potential threats, as well as, you know, maybe farting will scare them off even more, uh, but that is an option. And beside that, you have a microphone option, which allows you to speak directly to your car and anyone near it. The beauty about that is it will say it in the most creepiest serial killer vibe kind of sound you've ever heard. I will fart on you. 
So you have all this footage, but how do you get it out of the car? Well, like I said, uh, you can do it from the mobile app. You can download the footage right to your phone, or you can just unplug a USB, bring it to the computer, and you'll have your footage that way. So let's say, God forbid, you get into an accident and police are on scene and they want to see your footage. Uh, most often, police officers would just, they just kind of just want to see the footage right away to see just what happens so they have an idea for their investigation. So most likely, if you want to offer to show them from the car screen as well as your phone screen, they should be okay with that as long as you provide the footage later. Most police forces these days have access to online clouds that you can upload footage to. So you can either do that from your phone, or if you don't have the phone option to you, you can take your USB drive, bring it back home to a computer, and upload it then. Most officers are okay with that, and then you can also send that footage to insurance and whatever else you need to. And law enforcement these days are becoming well known to Tesla's sentry mode and the ability of all the cameras. So even if uh, you're not directly involved in an accident, they may ask for footage if they know that a Tesla was in the area. So in terms of troubleshooting, there's a couple things uh, you may encounter. Very often, or not very often, but the most common thing, a uh, issue with the USB drive. That I've seen a couple alert error messages with that. Sometimes they go away, sometimes they don't, but it should tell you what's wrong with it. Either you have a, a drive that's too small or a drive that's not fast enough. Those are two common issues that you may run into if you have a USB error. So another error you might get is a full drive. So like I said, you have a couple options. You can either format the drive completely or select a few clips and delete those. But that really shouldn't be an issue as like I have 128 gig and because dash cam rewrites over itself, really sentry mode, you can, there's a lot of footage you can get with sentry mode on 128. So you probably shouldn't have to worry about that. So one thing to note, sentry mode will not work if your battery is under 20%. However, dash cam will work as usual. If you run into anything else that's kind of like glitchy, your best thing to do is do a software reboot, which is basically two fingers on a scroll wheel, hold it down until the system reboots itself, and that should clear up any errors. And of course, the system relies on cameras, so you want to make sure those are clear and unobstructed. There's a couple ways to check this. You can go to your service menu and see camera visibility. That will kind of automatically check if there's any issues with the cameras, as well as you can view the cameras, camera preview, and that will show you exactly what your cameras are seeing, so you can see if there's any issues. But basically, you want to keep them clear as much as possible. So every once in a while, I suggest kind of going over them and uh, using like a lens cleaner, just give them a good wipe down. All right, I think we're good. I think we've covered everything there is to know about dash cam and Sentry so that you can keep your Tesla protected. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss videos, which I release about every week or so. Tons of awesome Tesla content, such as this Tesla 101 series, as well as Tesla tips and tricks, and all kinds of product reviews and other videos as well. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week. In the meantime, drive safe and drive electric. All right, welcome back to the channel. Dan here from Northern Tesla. Own a Tesla. So you own a Tesla. So you, so you own a Tesla, but are you using? So do with, so as Dash, so, so, so in order to format in the car, disable Sentry Sound. So with, so the next set, Next up, so the next setting is, so the next setting is disable sentry sound. Now, so obviously, so you have all this footage, but now you need to get, so, so all this footage is, so all this, so in the, in the so, so yeah, so in the live camera,